Once an AT implementation plan is written, it has to be used, and it's only going to work if everyone who needs to use it has a copy. So once it's written, it needs to be copied and distributed. That could be electronic, that could be in paper form, it doesn't matter. But if I'm serving that child, I need to know what I'm supposed to be doing, so I would need a copy. I think it should probably go home to the parents so they know what's going on, so what they can ask their child about their day and find out what happened and, and report back if they hear that it's not being implemented. Well, you know, it's really not enough to just consider AT and then to try AT. You also have to implement it with the child across the environments, and that takes planning. Uh, in order to do it well, I think you have to have an implementation plan that looks at each of the environments and each of the tasks and who will be responsible to make sure that it's available and working and has the, anything programmed into it that it might need. I mean, those are just critical pieces. In order for team members to consistently and accurately collect data, the data you're collecting has to be meaningful and practical. It has to be something that you really want to know and that those people who are collecting the data really want to know. So it needs to be decided by the team who will be actually collecting the data about what they will do, what's reasonable, when can they do it, how can they do it. You, know, you could set up a lovely plan all by yourself sitting somewhere in an office but if you're expecting someone else to do it and it doesn't meet a need for them, and it isn't something they can do easily, it won't happen. And I, you know, I find all people who work with kids with disabilities are very dedicated to what they do. The teachers, the therapists, the paraprofessionals, all are there because they care about kids. But they have a lot on their plate. And we can't just arbitrarily say, oh, and you also have to do this. So we really need to engage in a discussion around the use of the technology, what is it do we need to know, and how can we find that out? It might be by taking a video once a week and comparing it. It might be by having work done before you use the technology and after you use the technology. Or it might be documenting when given the choice, does he use the technology or not use it, or which one does he use. It might be something we have to do every day for a couple of weeks to see, you know, how accurate is he in hitting those keys? Are we asking something that's possible or not possible? So we need to decide as a team what it is we need to know and how we might find it out and then make sure we do it according to the plan and that we're consistent about doing it. It doesn't, again, help us if the teacher's collecting data but when the speech pathologist sees the child she doesn't do it or vice versa or deciding that the parents also need to collect data and then that doesn't happen. We need to have those people involved in decision making and come up with a plan that's workable and then have it in writing and have a form that's as easy to use as possible for what we want to do. And you know I guess the last thing I need to say is that someone has to look at that data and use it to then change what they do because a number of times I have come into an IEP meeting and had someone say oh yeah here I've got all these data sheets we haven't really looked at them what good does that do? You know, we, we don't collect data just for the sake of collecting data. We collect it so that we can modify our interventions so the child will learn more. When you're in the process of implementing assistive technology with a student, it's important to document things. It's important to document the technology, how it's being managed, if you've had operational problems, if it's had to go in for repair, um, and making sure that you're keeping track of that because that may play into future upgrades and decisions that way.